All right, uh, so we have talked about before this very bizarre aspect of American political life that the United States, almost alone in the democratic world, has a complete inability to count all the votes that are cast on election day and to announce the results that night. In fact, it doesn't just take 24 hours for them to do it. It takes many days. In fact, it takes weeks and sometimes even months for various states to count all the votes that are cast. We had no results at all that were certified or definitive for many days after the 2020 election day. Ele there's no election day anymore. There's constant voting for weeks or more than a month leading up to what we used to call election day, but there's no decision announced on election day unless it's a landslide or a blowout because the United States just has not implemented a system that enables it to count all the votes, even though pretty much every other country in the democratic world is able to do that. I remember in the 2020 primary in California, the Democratic primary, they didn't issue a final vote total until two and a half months after the day that voters went to cast their votes. Two and a half months it took them to count the votes. And obviously when everyone sees the rest of the world holding elections and counting votes, including countries of similar sizes to the United States, and then issuing the vote totals in a reliable and certified way, hours after the polls close, and then see that the United States takes days and weeks to do that, of course that's going to create, validly so, distrust in the integrity of the election. And already, we are being primed to uh, not expect any vote tallies to be counted, any results to be known anywhere near election night. Here from Politico earlier this week, quote, he runs Fox News' decision desk. Here's how he sees election night coming. Quote, in a new interview, Arnon Mishkin opens up about controversial election calls and makes some predictions for what's to come. Quote, in an interview with Political Magazine at the News Corp building in Midtown Manhattan, Mishkin said that he plans on calling the election as soon as he can, but that a protracted vote count means it may take a few days. The race seems very, very close. It is dependent on a number of states like Pennsylvania that we believe are going to be reporting in a pattern similar to the way they have reported in the past. So I'd say the over-under is Saturday. Remember, election day is Tuesday. He's saying he expects the results to be known on Saturday, four days later, five days later, which was when the call was made the last time, which is when Pennsylvania is likely to come in. Here from... CBS News, Pennsylvania election officials are bracing for conspiracy theories and protests. Quote, unlike many other states, Pennsylvania can only begin processing mail-in ballots on the morning of election day. It took four days to call the election in Pennsylvania in 2020 as those days passed, leaving the 2020 election results hanging in the balance. All eyes were on the Pennsylvania Convention Center in Philadelphia. Police and protesters were outside while Schmidt and his fellow members on the Board of Elections oversaw the counting of a record 375,000 mail-in ballots, most of them from Democratic voters. He has urged people to be patient with Pennsylvania. Here from the outlet Just the News on October 24th, the headline, Republicans warn of long election day lines in Maricopa County and says that the results will be delayed. Quote, election officials in Maricopa County, Arizona, announced that it will likely take 10 to 13 days to tabulate all the ballots cast in the presidential election next month. Just more than 2 million people in Maricopa County are expected to vote in the presidential election in two weeks, and already over 400,000 people have voted. Quote, it will take 10 to 13 days after election day to complete the tabulation of all ballots. Depending on how close races are, the contest may be called much earlier than that, an official told Just the News on Wednesday, or if they're too close, we may not know the results for a week or two after what we call election day. Here from CBS News, quote, election results could be delayed in the city of Warren. County clerk explains why, quote, after the 2020 election, people thought something was wrong because of how long it took to count votes, said Macomb County clerk Anthony For Forlini. Forlini said Michigan now allows local governments to opt in to be able to count absentee votes eight days early. All city clerks in larger municipalities in Macomb County took advantage of the law except for the Warren city clerk. 
Forlini said he doesn't understand the decision to wait until election night to count absentee votes because it could potentially delay the results. Now, one of the comparisons that I often make when really looking at this and being confounded, it, I mean, it has to be deliberate. I mean, obviously, if every other country can count all their votes on election night, the United States can if it chose to. It just doesn't choose to. And the country I know best after the United States, or one of the countries I know best, is Brazil because of how closely I follow their politics. And this is what happens in Brazil. Brazil is, to put it mildly, not known for being particularly bureaucratically efficient. It's the anti-Germany, as I often think about it. It's, it's a country that has a great deal of difficulty and that I find it a charm for anything to work efficiently. And yet, the way elections work is that they take place on a Sunday, not Tuesday, to ensure that the maximum number of people can vote, that work doesn't interfere. Voting is mandatory, so is a very uh, pervasive culture that people do go and vote. They show ID in order to vote, even though Brazil has well-known and notorious income inequality. And it's not just people who are 18 and over, but even 16 to 18 who can vote. And Brazil is a little bit smaller than the United States in population. But when you put all those things together of mandatory voting and a bigger voting block and having it be on Sunday, the number of votes ends up being roughly similar to how many votes have to be counted in the United States. And the way every single election works is that the polls open at 8 o'clock in the morning. They close at 5 p.m. in the afternoon or 6 p.m. in the afternoon, depending on particular states. And then by 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock at night, 10, 30, or 11 at the absolute latest, the full, complete vote count, not just for the presidential race, but for the governor races, for the uh, state legislatures, are all fully counted and certified. Here from the New York Times, October 30th, 2022, quote, Brazil elects Lula, a leftist former leader, in a rebuke of Bolsonaro. Quote, voters in Brazil on Saturday ousted Bolsonaro after just one term and elected the leftist former president Lula da Silva. Election officials said it rebuked him for Bolsonaro's far-right movement and his divisive four years in office. As of 11 p.m. local time on Sunday night, which was election day, Mr. Bolsonaro had not publicly commented on the election's outcome. The question of whether he would concede and would remain uh, and when remained unclear. But all the votes were counted. The full uh, tally was issued. And although the New York Times depicted it as this rebuke to this far right movement, in fact, the election was extremely close, extremely narrow, despite all the same barriers and problems that other incumbents in the world had, like COVID and the resulting electoral economic fallout. Here from the New York Times, July of this year, quote, how the French election results unfolded. Quote, a left-wing coalition unexpectedly surged, and the far-right national rally fell short of predictions, but no coalition captured a majority in parliament, meaning months of gridlock could lie ahead. Quote, polls will close at 6 p.m. local time in most of France, although voting will stay open until 8 p.m. in some larger cities. France's interior minister is expected to start publishing initial results at 8 p.m., and nationwide seat projections by polling institutes are expected at around the same time. And then the New York Times updated the article throughout the night, and basically within a few hours of the polls closing, they were able to have the full Results known. Here from the U.S. News and World Report in February of this year, how Indonesia holds the world's biggest single-day election. Quote, there are roughly 205 million registered voters, and turnout in past elections has been about 75%, according to the International Foundation for Electoral Systems, a U.S.-based organization that provides technical support for elections. Voters have a six-hour window to cast their ballots. Indonesia has three time zones, and the first polls in the east open at 2200 GMT, and all will be closed by 0600 GMT on February 14th. Voting booths will be overseen by election officials, party members, and independent observers to safeguard against manipulation. Polls must be closed nationwide before counting can begin. Voters cast a secret ballot and dip fingers in indelible ink to prevent duplicate voting when an official vote count by the poll body is expected to late last late into election night 
Quick counts by independent survey agencies should provide an early indication of results from 0800 GMT within 24 hours. CNN, April of 2024, quote, South Korea opposition wins landslide midterm vote in resounding blow to President Yoon. South Korea's liberal opposition party scored a landslide victory in a parliamentary election held on Wednesday, detailing a resounding blow to the president and his conservative party, but likely falling short of a supermajority. The Democratic Party was projected to take more than 170 of the 300 seats in the new legislature. Data by the National Election Commission and network broadcasters showed with more than 99% of the votes counted, as of 5.55 a.m. on Thursday. I could just go on. Every country counts all of their votes in the same night. Now, there are differences in the U.S., namely that there's no federalized system the way, say, there is in Brazil or France or Argentina or South Korea. Instead, each state is responsible for certifying and counting and certifying its own vote totals. Most of these countries now use electronic voting, often with... Uh, audited paper backups, whereas the United States continues to use very antiquated systems that prevent voting instantaneously or through computer, but this is all a choice. And obviously you should, you can and should ask why the United States makes that choice to ensure that voting doesn't occur instantaneously or vote totals don't occur instantaneously, but over days and even weeks. But is it any wonder, even if the counting is perfectly in good faith, that people have serious doubts about the integrity of the results when days go by and the results keep changing and no one knows where ballots are and there's ballots over here of one kind and ballots over here from another and some are destroyed and some get lost and some get disputed. This doesn't happen in other democratic countries. And if the United States wants to restore faith in the electoral system, it's very easy to do. You implement a nationwide computerized system of voting with audible backups to ensure that they can have audits. And then you have a quick, instantaneous, within four, five, six, seven hours of the poll closing when the results are known. Not the results being known four days later or two weeks later or a month later or even beyond. And the indignation that people have in media and in politics when citizens express distrust of the electoral of the electoral system is stunning given that everything they do is designed to engender that distrust that valid distrust especially when you look around at the rest of the world and see so many countries that should have greater difficulties but instead are perfectly able to count every single vote within hours of the polls closing and until the United States chooses to fix this problem there will be growing distrust in the electoral process. Thanks for watching this clip from System Update, our live show that airs every Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on Rumble. You can catch the full nightly shows live or view the backlog of episodes for free on our Rumble page. You can also find full episodes the morning after they air across all major podcasting platforms, including Spotify and Apple. All the information you need is linked below. We hope to see you there.